Hey, how's it going, everybody? Finally got another pickups video for you guys. As uh, I ended up getting sick this last Sunday, and other than Goodwill, just, yeah, the last two weekends I skipped on going to swap meet or yard sale or whatever. But uh, previous to that, I did make myself a new contact at the Golden Valley Indoor Swap Meet. Found a dude there, and in fact, I found him through Craigslist. And he's also got a Facebook page, but uh, sells retro video games. And also he does trades, which <laughs> cool for me on the fact he does trades because I got a lot of stuff that I could help him get started there. It's, I think he's only been open for a couple of weekends so far. Anyways, don't know when I'll be hooking up with him again to see if I can do some deals with them as we're having our 50 degree and 40 degree weather so way too cold to get out and this is the first day that I'm finally feeling good to where I'm getting over my flu that I caught Sunday so I do not want to relapse and go through the same bullshit that I went through last time I got the flu which that was bad man that was flu stress anxiety chronic pain my back was out you name it man i was fucking miserable so fortunately this time just the flu and i was able to kick it otherwise a few new a couple of new star wars items here and some video game related stuff and one music related thing and also i'm going to show you guys what i did to my little remote controlled bb8 i just did some touch-up work on them to bring out the detail Seen another YouTuber's video, man, and it got me inspired and said, hey, man, I, I <laughs> like the way that looks, so easy enough. Something to where all I needed was just a really, really fine tip Sharpie pen. So I'm going to show that last. The wise, show you what I got at Ross here. This is one of the uh, larger Hasbro Star Wars characters. And this is one I've been putting off getting. Is, uh, for a while, Walmart was wanting about 15 or 16 bucks for this guy, which too much. Anyways, I think I pay like $6.98 or $7.98 a Ross. And he's still in the box and everything, so I'm just going to show him to you in the box. There's plenty of videos showing this guy now as he's been out for a while. And all I can say, he is tall. In fact, when you take him out of here, you have to attach... The bottom part of his legs man too big to fit in the regular size box here or whatever so anyways got one of Chewbacca and I'm just gonna slip him out of here like I say he's all attached still I haven't found a spot to put him yet let's see it's one two Yeah, definitely long. I don't know if it says how tall he is or not. I don't think these do. Yeah, I don't see anything on the box that gives the uh, height for this guy, but he's pretty damn tall. As you can see, he's got a couple pegs there, and then you got to attach the other half of his legs. But not bad. I just didn't want to pay the high price that Walmart wanted. So anyways, they had a couple of these at Ross, so I got lucky. And uh, speaking of Ross, now that it's getting close to Christmas, they've been getting in a lot of Star Wars stuff in the way of toys, Lego stuff, this kind of stuff, whatever. At least at my store, say this guy was like 6 or seven ninety five, so not bad. And then they also have the... Uh, the new X-Wing, which I think that was $16.95 or whatever, so not too bad on that. And then they also had some kind of a Lego set for Star Wars, and I can't remember how much that was. It was either like around 30 bucks or less. They always really knock the prices good at Ross. So if you're trying to find one of these guys, check out Ross. Being that they're a... Uh, store that's got clothes out or uh, seconds type stuff like all their clothing I'm gonna say it's more like seconds like missized or whatever this is more just closing out or whatever your store may have different stuff than mine but definitely worth checking out 
So mine got in a whole bunch of stuff for Christmas in the way of toys and stuff for the kids. So, this guy was like $15.98 at Walmart, and uh, uh, I just watched the video yesterday. I was just trying to find something to take my mind off of feeling sick. As I said, today's the first day that I'm feeling better. But uh, all I can say is uh, look this guy up and just say mod or customi <laughs> customized or whatever, and you should be able to run into this guy's vid because he did an awesome job on this dude. So anyways, my Walmart got in a whole bunch of stuff for Rogue One. This is... K2SO. I know I have not seen the movie yet. My theater sucks ass. <laughs> Once again, I'm sick, so I don't plan on seeing it until it comes out on DVD or whatever. Blu ray. Anyways, pretty cool looking. Once again, I got to keep it in the package for now. I'm trying to find room to put up another shelf so I can show off some more of this stuff. Anyways, what I can point out on what this guy did, first thing he did was take the whole thing apart and do an entirely different paint job to make it look more like the one out of the movie, make it look aged, as I guess it's a droid that's been around for a long time, so he's got age and battle scars and stuff on him. And, uh, looked like on the arms here is... Yeah, from what I can tell, his arms are two pieces of plastic, but it looks like everything's glued together. I don't see any screws anyways. I guess in the movie, that area is drilled out. They probably just filled that in to make his arms more solid for little kids anyways. He drilled that out and then painted that all up, silver. Did the same thing on the sides of his legs there. And I'd say the coolest thing he did, other than the paint job, drilled out both of the eyes and stuck in a couple of white LEDs and then put like a little dot on each one so it looks just like the movie man all lights up and it looked like he hid the battery pack inside of its back here and just has a little switch uh, to change out batteries I have no clue how he did that but he had some kind of a battery pack type box to attach to the two uh, LEDs really cool looking in fact when I I was just trying to see if anybody painted one of them up so on that man so far this dude that I found was the best he also made a custom platform to make it look like he's standing in dirt so definitely worth picking this guy up man this is in fact uh, from what my store has gotten so far I think it was this guy Next one I'm going to pick up when I get more money is the uh, Death Trooper. The Death Trooper looks really good, and it comes with two weapons. And I think one of them has the holster. So really cool. I'm thinking they got a either a different artist or they're just putting in more work on these ones. They seem to be more detailed. And then they had one of the uh, female characters. Hence, I haven't seen the movie, so I can't really name them other than the Death Trooper. And, yeah, all they show is his face there on the side. So it sound that dude definitely worth picking up. On articulation, let's see, it was, uh, that's, that's something I want to point out here for anybody who gets thrown on it like I did. It's just eight points of articulation. But the way they're doing there, because if you're not looking at the head on how it moves around as it is on a ball socket you're thinking it's only got seven points if you look at the other characters they did the head only turns left and right so that's considered articulation there this because it's on a ball socket so you can move around and turn they're considering that two points so there you go otherwise doesn't bend at the arms doesn't bend at the legs other than up here it's uh, pretty much just a nice display piece. All right, now for some Goodwill finds. After finding all the retro 
handheld stuff from the 80s on video game type things, I've been hitting up every single bin that's full of toys and just going through it like crazy. And this little guy, I can't believe the condition he's in from how old he is. I believe he is from, um, I think this guy's from 1982. Anyways, it's one of the little wind-up toys. I used to have tons of these when I was a little kid. Anyways, found one of Pac-Man. And he still works, so I will wind him up here. I'll show you what he does. And I think this guy I paid like a quarter for. something to you. Anyways, as you can see there, he's got a little ghost in his mouth. The eyeballs are a sticker. The sticker is still in good shape. So I'm thinking this was adult owned or maybe they had it on their desk or something and it just never got played with by a little kid. Man, I would not expect to have this sticker look perfect for something going back to the early 80s. Otherwise, cool little find. Now for my most recent pickup, video game related. Um, this is still going for about 20 bucks at Walmart or something, man. I can't remember what my store charges for this. Or maybe it was 20 bucks online, because sometimes the online price is cheaper than what my store has, or just outright Walmart stores. So it might be more like 25 or 30. Anyways. Found this Pac-Man plug and play in really good, damn near like new condition. This is something for anybody who's in the retro games or definitely Pac-Man and wants a nice one because mine doesn't seem to have any problems. This has quite a few Pac-Man games on it. Like regular Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, I think it's got Pac-Man Jr., Super Pac-Man, and a few that I haven't heard of, and then some other games, non-Pac-Man related. So a nice number of games for a plug-and-play. More than usual. What's really cool on this, this back piece, and this was lucky, man. It was in the bin next to where I found this. For a while, I thought it was lost. Anyways, it has a place to hide the cord, and then that's where you put your batteries. Let's see, this one is made by Namco and Bondi Games, not Jack Pacific. And this is probably one of the very few in my plug-and-play collection that's not put out by Jack Specific. That's one of these types. So pretty cool, and I think I got this for like a dollar. That's something cool that happened, man. Not for the employees that have to deal with it there and find the freaking prices, but uh, my Goodwill, where you just go through binfuls, where it's just leftover stuff from the other stores, they lowered their prices. Which, uh, for me, cool. For the uh, people that work there, everything has an individual price now. I think the only thing they said that they weigh now is clothing. Other than, like, shoes or whatever. I like clothing, shirts, pants, whatever. That's all weighed out. I think bedding is weighed out. And it looked like the highest price you're going to pay. Which, that, I don't know. On furniture, I don't know how they're going to work that. But on the uh, chart that they have up on the wall... It was stopping at seven bucks, so <laughs> don't know, man. <laughs> My store, it's not like a regular Goodwill to where they have a place to keep this stuff. They constantly get stuff in, so they have to sell it. And it's, everything is dirt cheap. So, for another Goodwill find. This is something I picked up because I'd never seen one before and looked like I could fix it. I could see right away what was wrong and did what I thought I'd have to do to fix it. And as far as I know, it works. I just don't have anything to play on it. 
Anyways, this is a Sony mini disc player. And let's see. When I looked this up, I can't remember if they stopped making these in the late 90s or early 2000s. They didn't last long. It's one of those things where it just didn't get, go over. So anyways, this is a Sony Walkman Net MD Walkman, so mini disc, model MZ slash N505 type R. And so all I can say is it powers up and what was wrong with it, it's got a little metal hook up to the front of it, or actually to the back of it, because it opens up at this end. That just holds the lid down. That had gotten bent back a little bit, like somebody jammed in one of the mini discs as they are in a cartridge and just bent it backwards. So I got it all straightened out. So it closes up, got it to power on. It acts like it's trying to load something. So hopefully, if I ever find any of those to play on this, it will work. Or even better, maybe I'll find one that you can record with. This is kind of like pre mp3 player to where they you can get the little standalone mp3 players this had it i guess to where you could hook it up to your computer and back up your mp3s onto a little mini disc like maybe a couple cds worth or whatever because they didn't hold that much data so here's what it looks like and this i'm figuring i paid about a buck i'd gotten this with some other stuff that I could care less about showing it. I don't think you guys would give a shit about seeing it. This was the cool thing. And not in bad shape. It's just got one light scratch going down there, but not bad. Back of it still looks good. And what's cool is this only takes one battery. And there was not a battery in it leaking acid. On hookups, it says line in optical. And the next to that is the hookup for your... USB, and then it's got two types of headphone hookups, standard there I guess for like earbuds, and then I don't know what that is next to it, I've never seen that type, and then that's your open button, so you press that, it pops open, and kind of loads up the same way as your Sony PSP, PlayStation Portable, same type of thing on how those games, they are a little miniature CD that is inside of a cartridge. Only difference on this is the cartridges were square and you could record on them. It's pretty cool. All right, now for BB-8. See, what I did was get a Sharpie and all the little detail areas, as in little lines cut into it, I just filled in. And just brought out all the detail. Didn't do any new painting or anything, just did the Sharpie thing. More so on the ball part than on his head. Pretty much on the head, I did all the top area. All this stuff along here I didn't do, or any of it on the bottom. And then um, on the head there, one of the problems with this is the magnets were too weak. So if you ran into something, his head would fall off, and then you start screaming in agony, and eventually shut off and die. Hence running over my cat with it. My cat fucking hates this thing. So, right off the bat... I sent him out as far as it's going to go, but before when I tried to do that, when I showed him off for the first time, the head fell right off. Anyways, that was a really easy fix. Shut him off here. Oh. Just going to point out to here, I'm not going to open it up, anyways. There are three screws in the bottom of this, so take those out. And uh, those are not like little BBs there for what the head tracks on. It's one piece. <laughs> so that's not going to fall out anyways. So once you take the screws out, 
carefully, and I mean carefully. Go along the lip here, try and get your thumbnail in there, and just move along and gradually wedge this piece out as it fits inside of it. As uh, This top half is really thin plastic. To where if you're squeezing on this too hard, trying to separate it, chances are you're going to crack it or do worse and just bust it outright. And then on the magnets, uh, let's see, <laughs> smaller than these, <laughs> this is a laser pointer battery, and I wouldn't say half the size, a little bit more than half the size of this had a fridge magnet that was nice and strong and I just dropped it in place. I didn't put in two magnets as there are two and the way they did it is one is positive, one is negative on the polarity on how it lines itself up. So you don't want to take those out and mess with it or you, too damn easy to get it backwards to where it's gonna make your remote control feel really weird. But uh the top part of the magnets are exposed, so like I say, man, I just dropped it in place, put it back together. Now it stays on really good. The only other thing that I'm thinking of doing, I just don't know if I have any laying around, is uh, this one's got more of a texture. I guess the one that uses your cell phone is more smooth, so it tracks better. And also, I think they put little wheels in here instead of these little peg things that kind of stick there. But uh, I was thinking of just getting some felt and just sticking it on and see how that does on smoothing it out more so it doesn't sound all scrapey when it tracks otherwise. Easy fix. Now the Rima. <laughs> could care less on this. Didn't do anything on it. If you wanted to, you could do the same thing with a Sharpie and fill in all the little lines and cracks and stuff but I'm not gonna bother on this guy that I saw him do the same thing I think the only other thing he did and I don't know how he made it to where you could turn it on and off take this off again here <laughs> definitely fits on tight now <laughs> big difference anyways um, yeah I think he outright replaced this whole piece here so that lights up on the rest of it because it's just white plastic it's not transparent I don't think he did anything else on lighting it up so I don't want to sit here forever <laughs> so I say man I'm trying to get over the flu I don't want to push it so far so good I don't know when I'm gonna be getting out again now that Christmas is getting close here I'm pretty much spent on money getting everybody their Christmas presents and stuff so may not have a vid until next year or who knows man sometimes I get money for Christmas and I've been hitting up Goodwill every time I go to town because I keep finding stuff like the BB-8 and whatever for dirt cheap once again I only paid about two bucks for that guy and uh both my Walmart and Kmart have them and I think my Walmart wants about uh, it's either 49 or 59 bucks, and then I think Kmart is five or ten dollars higher, so he's still going for a good chunk of change. And brand new, man. I think the only thing wrong with it was the box was tore up a little bit. I'm figuring it came from like a second hand type store where they just get damaged goods, and that was the only thing that was damaged. Just got lucky. So, everybody, have a good Christmas. Happy holidays to anybody else that doesn't celebrate Christmas, man. Everybody's got to have a good time. So, catch you all later.